Uh, my name is Orla Flynn. I'm the head of CIT Crawford College of Art and Design, which is based in, in Cork, obviously. And um, CIT is a multi-campus institution, and the art college itself has a number of different uh, departments, uh, one of which is the Department of Media Communications, and that department is located on the main CIT campus in Bishopstown in Cork City. Firstly, welcome to Donegal. I'm sure you've been up here a few times before. I have. I've visited here in Letterkenny a couple of times as well, and uh, it's not my first time at all up the north, so it's, it's, we always get a great welcome when we come up. Um, now, you, you provide a great facility down in Cork. Uh, how important is it for you to be a part of this project? Um, well, it's kind of interesting for us being part of this project because we're the only academic partner in the project. Um, most of the other partners represent um, municipalities, um, regional development associations, um, or, or, or in, in the, as in the case of Derry Donegal, it's partnerships uh, between different areas. So from our point of view, um, this is allowing us to gain access to people with a particular perspective that we don't have. So the perspective that our other partners bring would be the perspective about policy um, and their connections with their local industries. Uh, and, and their relationship with industries in their areas would be quite different to our relationship with industry. So it's been a very interesting uh, learning curve for us. Um, and as well as that, we add something to the project. So we're, we're developing a, a digital observatory and, or an observatory to look at best practices and uh, as a repository and as a kind of an access point where we can all learn from what, what, it, what, what each other is doing. Uh, and our role in the project mainly is to uh, deliver that. So we've a kind of a very, quite a technical role in the project. Yes, we're, yes, we're going to be very busy. What do you hope to achieve from the project? Well, um, again, I mentioned that we wanted to learn from good practices that are in place in, in other regions um, and maybe to learn a bit about their relationships with their higher education institutions and, and maybe we can benefit from that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the observatory itself. Um, that's something that we feel would be useful for us in terms of capturing the types of projects that our students do with industry and using those as perhaps examples of good practice um, and that can be shared with people in other regions. So um, it'll be useful for us. Um, the project will also allow us to do um, a SWOT analysis of industry in our regions and, and produce an implementation plan. So from our point of view, that's something that the project is enabling us to carry out um, in, in a way that we weren't able to do previously. What's, what is the strength and weaknesses of, of, of business at the moment that's found it difficult in the digital media sector? Well, I think the strengths and weaknesses would vary from one region to another. And uh, I suppose in, in the case of our own um, uh, SWOT analysis, what we have found um, would be that the, the, the lack of a kind of a coherent sector um, and, a, and a kind of a, the, the, the networking um, opportunities, the strength of the AV or multimedia industry as a sector in its own right I is lacking. So you could pick any other um, industry and you could say, well, they belong to the pharmaceutical industry or the ICT industry. And what we found is that audiovisual or multimedia industry is sometimes seen as a subsector of, of ICT or, or whatever, but it kind of lacks an identity um, of its own. Um, there's also um, infrastructural deficits in relation to broadband, but, but again, that's quite variable from one region to another. Um, I suppose the opportunities that have come up um, in terms of uh, the, the, the SWOT analysis uh, would be things like opportunities to strengthen the, cl the clustering would be very important. Um, strengths would be that there are strong entrepreneurial and enterprise uh, support. So for people that want to start their own company, there's quite good supports there. Um, there is a talented labor force and there's fairly good educational opportunities in the area. And um, uh, again, another opportunity is that we do have um, opportunities to provide sort of co-located um, facilities for multimedia content development. Um, threats then would be obviously competition from outside our region. Um, and I suppose one threat is the lack of a consistently strong broadband service in, in the region. Um, and then the, 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 f the other threat then is one which probably affects all the partners to one extent or another, uh, is the finance and the, 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 the weakness of the banking sector at the moment in, in providing finance to, to businesses that are trying to get off the ground. Now, what's the sector like currently in your home location? What's, what's it like at the minute? Um, well, in the Cork area, and, and we would be looking at the city and the county area, um, you know, we have a number of different industries that we feel would fall under the, the heading of media related, audiovisual related, um, including advertising, publishing, um, even in the architecture side of things, there they, they would be an AV um, section there. There's design. 
um, and mostly in the visual communications area, but also in Cork we would have quite a strong craft-based in industry. Um, film, video, photography is, is quite strong also in the Cork area and what's I suppose interesting for us is the amount of video production that's actually going on and we probably hadn't realised the extent to which uh, this was going on, uh, it, the, the, ex the extent to which it was happening really in the Cork area. Um, we're also seeing the animation and 3D sectors. Um, I suppose some of the, 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 the companies that people would be familiar with in those areas would be the Sminky Shorts, uh, which has had millions of hits on, on YouTube, um, and the, the growth of the comic sector. So, uh, I mean, comic design, comic drawing sector. So, um, we have graduates like Will Sliney and Alan Corbett who've um, published books um, in, in the comic book sec uh, sector quite recently. Um, electronic publishing is another area that's, that's gaining in traction. Um, television and radio, um, RT would have studios in Cork and there would be some local commissioning going on. We have a film commissioner um, in Cork who, who operates under the Irish um, Film Commission. Um, and again, local radio is always a, a big sector for us. And most of those are rolling out digital platforms now as well, so they, they have a big, um, you know, a big ICT aspect to them. Um, and again, of course, social networking. Um, we have a number of courses in CIT which try to promote public relations and journalism with new media because increasingly you're seeing um, people who work in these sectors having to be extremely flexible. So journalists have to record and shoot their own film, um, promote it not just under traditional distribution outlets but also promote it via new media. So all of the radio um, and television stations now have Twitter feeds, they have Facebook pages, they encourage um, real-time interaction with their audiences. So these are all new models of engagement that this project is, is hoping to identify good practices that we find in these areas and, and share them and promote them. A local company can be global with a touch yeah. above a button and it's all putting the right infrastructure in place yeah. and tapping into that resource. Mm -hmm. uh, how important is that? Well, I think that's huge and probably something that has maybe grown in a kind of an ad hoc fashion, I guess. Um, you know, the, the use of, the, the, the digital infrastructure is hugely important for that and you, you mentioned that there in terms of rolling that out and, um, but, but Ireland is still quite behind other countries in relation to having our digital infrastructure and I know we're targeting certain areas um, such as Derry, such as Ennis um, in County Clare as being, you know, being digital towns and digital areas uh, but really if we want to support um, a real growth uh, and promotion of, of what we have to offer, we need to have that rolled out uh, right across the whole country. Um, other things that I think we can do uh, would be to promote the use of digital tools at our primary and second level schools. And again, we're beginning to see iPad initiatives in the second level schools, um, and we're beginning to see the emergence of a digitally literate um, young population. Um, the Coder Dojo is a great example, uh, which started in Cork. Um, f uh, just it was a voluntary um, engagement in programming, and we've seen and the the youngest ever app developer um, came out of Cork, and his app I think was called PizzaBot um, became uh, accepted onto the in, uh, on the iTunes um, uh, website and, and became uh, an international bestseller. So these are all kind of ad hoc developments that have happened, and um, happily we, we are seeing government policies beginning to to strongly support these, which is very welcome. What's good about doing business in Cork? What's not good about Cork? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I'm a Waterford woman now, so I suppose I'd have to, to, to say that. But um, Cork was always a really well-connected city. I think Cork and Derry actually have a lot of similarities in terms of the port of Cork, port of Derry. Um, we would always have historically have had strong connections with Europe. Um, we've, we have good infrastructure, we have strong policy makers and a very strong chamber of commerce, uh, very strong uh, regional authorities uh, down there and very strong educational institutions in Cork. So, um, you know, so, so Cork is a great spot, uh, as well as the other extracurricular cultural um, activities that go on there. It's a very rich place, I think, to, to do business. And a lot, a lot of people talk about these conferences, and so, but personally, from your own point of view, are you, are you learning much from it? Um, we're learning a huge amount, um, again, not just in the formal um, conference setting itself, and in the formal conference setting, uh, we're learning uh, from experts that our, our, our peers are bringing um, t t to the venue. So, for example, this afternoon, our Genoa partners 
are bringing somebody from the university in Genoa who's talking about a course that they set up in their university in partnership with the gaming industry and that's something I'm really looking forward to learning uh, in a formal way this afternoon but informally we're also learning about each other's cultures um, learning about each other's foods um, learning about ways of doing business um, so last night, for example, we were in Derry and we learned, uh, w we had a, an audience with the different drums group and we all learned about the tradition of the drumming in, in, in the Derry um, and the North of Ireland uh, context and the, the different drums, so to speak. And that was very enriching um, for, for those of us from, from, from Cork. Um, it was a new perspective, but also very rich for those from, from, from elsewhere in Europe who may not have been familiar with the, the different traditions that we have. And I think that promotes a great sense of, um, of tolerance and respect for each other's cultures and that's always very valuable. And from a point of view, is there similarities there with doing business? Uh, are you seeing a similar approach? Uh, we're all European, so are you seeing similar approaches from how they do business in Italy to Spain to Poland? Is there similarities there? Well, we're seeing some similarities, um, but we're also, we're also, I suppose, surprised sometimes that people do things differently to us. And, you know, we, we kind of assume that everybody, the logical way of doing it is the way we do it. And we are finding that other people are learning from the way we're doing things. Um, and, and, and that's very positive for us to hear that. But we're also learning from, from other places. So even little things like um, central funding from national funders versus local funding and th the separations between those funding routes sometimes can cause people problems. So from that, from that perspective, um, in Ireland, we seem to have quite a joined up approach um, and, and people communicate quite well in relation to those um, kind of um, funding issues. Um, but but there, are, there are some similarities, of course, um, and, and we've, we've found them right across the project under the different headings. How did you manage to get from Waterford to Cork? Um, <laughs> well, I suppose I, I, I went to university in Cork and I'm um, lecturing in, in, in CIT, so, um, and, and I'm from West Waterford, which is literally only 10 miles from the Cork border, so um, didn't go very far. Um, so, it, as I said, in, in the Munster area, typically, um, you know, Cork, I suppose, is, is the second largest city in Ireland and, um, you know, there's a lot of employment opportunities in Cork.